Call to order. Good evening. The regular session of the Newport Beach City Council, September 27, 2016. Madam Clerk. The record will reflect that all members of council are present. Public comments. The city provides a yellow signing card to assist in the preparation of the minutes. The completion of the card is not required in order to address the city council. If the optional signing card has been completed, it should be placed in the box provided at the podium. The city council of Newport Beach welcomes and encourages community participation. Public comments are invited on items listed on the agenda and on agenda items. Speakers must limit comments to three minutes per person to allow everyone to speak. Written comments are encouraged as well. The city council has a discretion to extend or shorten the time limit on agenda or non-agenda items. Any public comments? Uh, thank you, Mayor Dixon and members of the council. My name is Jim Mosier. Uh, with all the issues facing the city, I was really surprised to find this afternoon that you had nothing that you needed to study. So I wanted to remind you again of something that you could, which is the Southern California Gas Company's program of deploying moderately unsightly antennas and boxes on city streetlights throughout the city. To, pro pro to provide a little context to this, the first, the tiny handful of public heard about this was a brief presentation at a study session way back in February of 2014 by Ms. Jennifer Vaughn of Southern California Gas. There was nothing in the announcement that told the public that this was about deploying antennas, but there was an assurance from the city attorney at that study session that this fell under the city's wireless ordinance which meant at a minimum that there would be public notice and hearings about the site selection and that the installations would follow certain design guidelines the city had painstakingly enacted. However, it seems that last December, the city manager signed a letter exempting Southern California Gas and this program entirely from the city's wireless ordinance and leasing 22 of the city street lights to Southern California Gas for the next 20 years at a total cost of $780 per site. Uh, the authority for doing that remains a little bit vague. When I got the first notice in late July that I mentioned to you before, that the street light in front of my house, which was not anywhere in this contract, was one of those that Southern California Edison wanted to use, I was a little puzzled about what was going on and curious. On the day of your last meeting, I got a second notice that they are no longer interested in the street light in front of mine, but would like to use the street light in front of my neighbor's house. Uh, that made me wonder what you had knew about this. So I submitted a Public Records Act request, and to date, the only thing city staff has been able to come up with is an emailed letter to all of you uh, about one month ago from Ms. Jennifer Vaughn, announcing that she was going to meet privately with each of you to explain what the program was about and how you could handle complaints that you might receive about it. I would submit to you that providing approval of a project that impacts many of the residents through private contacts out of the public view is not a way that the city government is supposed to work. And I think this is a textbook case of something impacting residents 
that needs to be aired here in a study session so that all of us are on the same page and know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have another speaker, please? Well, good evening, Mayor Dixon, members of the council. I'm Steve Ray. I'm the executive director of the Banning Ranch Conservancy. Uh, I am here because I see you have on your closed session uh, tonight uh, the uh, idea of discussing the Banning Ranch. Um, I'm here to object to this being discussed in closed session. Uh, first of all, there's been no recent action on the litigation at all. The briefing ended months ago. The uh, Supreme Court will not be scheduling oral arguments on this probably until next summer. There seems to be nothing to discuss. Oh, maybe there is. The Banning Ranch project was denied by the Coastal Commission earlier this month on a nine to one vote. Maybe that's what you're gonna be discussing. We would submit that that is an improper item to discuss in closed session. It does not fall within the parameters of the kind of items that can be discussed in closed session. That would be something that would be subject to a public discussion about the Banning Ranch decision, uh, your reactions to it, your thoughts about it, things like that. That's a public discussion item. That is not a closed session item. And since there seems to be nothing about your legal case to talk about, that must be the discussion we would presume and therefore we do object to it. Uh, to discuss that in closed session, in our opinion, will show a pattern and a practice uh, of abuse in the closed session process, uh, just in order to allow you to discuss this uh, thing and get your thoughts out uh, outside of public purview. This does need to be in the public purview. In our opinion, this would constitute a violation of the Brown Act, uh, and we certainly hope that you have no uh, intention of violating the Brown Act. Uh, we have advised the council in the past on potential Brown Act violations in advance of the violation and the council went forward with it, the city went forward with these items and we unfortunately had to take uh, action filing complaints and then it had to be redone again uh, when we prevailed in the case. So we're asking that you not do it again this time. Uh, what we would recommend instead is if you want to discuss Banning Ranch, Discuss it with us at the Conservancy. Uh, we have made this offer to the city over the years, many times, multiple times, to sit and discuss this, to try to see if there's a workable solution to this. We are very sincere in this request, or in this offer. We have actually made this offer multiple times over the years, I mean, several times a year we make this offer to the developers. They have refused to, uh, to avail themselves of, of our offer. If they had done so, there might have been a different uh, slightly more favorable uh, outcome at the Coastal Commission hearing. So we would invite you to, to sit with us. We invite the applicants to sit with us uh, and see if we can't work something out. The only other thing I can, can surmise is that, and I see that your counsel, uh, Mr. Manley, is here tonight, uh, and maybe there is some legal maneuver that you are considering, and we would advise you not to go there either. Thank you very All much. Right, thank you very much. Mr. City Attorney, do you want to make a comment? Yes, I, I appreciate Mr. Ray's comments, but there's going to be absolutely no discussion of anything that would be inappropriate in closed session. We'll be discussing the Banning Ranch litigation, and so you shouldn't be concerned about any alleged violation of the Brown Act. I hope that relieves you of all your concerns. Um, Madam, Mr. Madam Mr. Mayor? Piotr, do you want to speak? Uh, Steve, you said we should contact you instead of our attorneys. Are you saying you're willing to withdraw your appeal to the Supreme Court? I, I take that by the laugh, it means no, so uh, thanks. Okay, are there any other public comments? Seeing none. All right, I'll go ahead and make the closed session announcement. Uh, the City Council will meet in closed session to, to conference with legal counsel regarding one matter of existing litigation entitled Banning Ranch Conservancy versus City of Newport Beach, and to conference with legal counsel regarding uh, whether the city should initiate litigation in regards to two matters. Thank you. We're in recess until 7 p.m.
Good evening. We are reconvening a regular meeting of the Newport Beach City Council. Madam Clerk. The record will reflect that all members of council are present. Mr. City Attorney. Uh, thank you, Mayor Dixon. There is no closed session report this evening. Uh, would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Petros, followed by the invocation by Council Member Curry, please. Please join me in a pledge to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Our Father and God, uh, we, your children, gather today and ask your blessings upon our community. We ask your protection upon our community. We ask for wisdom throughout our land, for our voters, for our leaders the protection of our troops and our public safety officials, and we ask for compassion, Lord, as we deal with the issues of all of the residents of our city. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. And we have a presentation. If you please come forward, let me get my notes. This is a presentation of a check. Sounds very positive. Uh, from the Newport Beach Public Library Foundation, we have Ms. Dorothy Larson, president of the Newport Beach Public Library Foundation, and her colleagues, if you'd please introduce them all. She is the new uh, program director at the Library Foundation. And thank you. I'm Tim, uh, and I'm here tonight with Dorothy and, uh, and Susan from the foundation. Um, on I'm the library services director, <laughs> and um, just on an annual basis, um, the foundation always grants the library a check, which is responsible for so many of the nice enhancements that we have. Um, and I just wanted to mention that for this year, um, the, the major component of the gift is an opening day collection for the Corona Del Mar branch, which is sl uh, slated open in the next few years. Thank you. Did you either, either of you want to okay. speak? Oh, we don't we don't want to take up much time, but I did want to mention I'm the chairman of the board of directors of the Library Foundation, and Susan, of course, is an actual employee of the foundation and doing a fabulous job running our programs, which I hope you all attend. They're great. But my point about this presentation is that it's such a wonderful example of a working public-private partnership, especially with this gift where we're able to provide the opening day collection for a whole new branch, and that's really exciting. We're really looking forward to our new Corona Del Mar Library. That is really fantastic. I want to commend the foundation and staff for their hard work. And the last meeting of our council, we accepted a, a check, a generous check from the Friends of the Library. So we're all headed in the right direction, and I applaud your good work and the support from the community. So thank you. And I'll come down, and I think we'll have a photograph. One more. One, two, three. Thank you. I'm Jim Place. I live in Newport Coast. And if you're going to uh, be hearing the 150 Newport Center. Oh, excuse me, sir. Run. We haven't opened up for uh, public comments yet. Could you just Pardon? wait? We have not opened for public comments. I thought this was a place for public comment. Not quite yet. Right not quite yet. <laughs> no. Now yeah, you'll be called. Uh, I mean, we'll make an announcement shortly. You're not going to listen to it tonight. I'm sorry. What I was just requesting is that if you're going to play. You're going to listen to the 150 Newport Center Sir, condo Sir, please project. sit down. We're not taking public comments. Please sit down. We will have public comments shortly. This is not the point of the agenda. All right, if you please have a seat. Not on your agenda. We are, 
the city clerk is going to give a, no a notice right now, if you would be so kind to wait a few minutes. As long as I'm here, I just want to say no, that if sir, you do have it, I'd like sir, to have it at the first. Sir, not. you could please sit down. This is just a matter of a few minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Notice to the public, the city provides a yellow sign-in card to assist in the preparation of the minutes. The completion of the card is not required in order to address the city council. If the optional sign-in card has been completed, it should be placed in the box provided at the podium. The city council of Newport Beach welcomes and encourages community participation. Public comments are generally limited to three minutes per person to allow everyone to speak. Written comments are encouraged as well. The city council has a discretion to extend or shorten the time limit on agenda or non-agenda items. As a courtesy, please turn cell phones off or set them in the silent mode. Now is the time for city council announcements. Uh, Mr. Petros. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, really neat announcement. Uh, please join us uh, September 30th. That's this weekend, uh, Friday, for a um, movie in the park at Cliff Drive Park. We will be uh, showing Disney's Zootopia. <laughs> the fun starts at 6 p.m. with free candy, popcorn, crafts, and the movie will begin at sundown. This is always a great event. A number of families show up. I would really hope to uh, extend the invitation to all uh, my friends in Newport Beach, but especially those up in the Heights. Uh, it would be great to see you all there. Uh, bring a, a nice chair, a warm blanket, and some things to share with your neighbors. Uh, there will also be the TK Burger truck will be there for uh, families that prefer to purchase dinner and TK Burgers is really delicious. So I hope to see you all out there. That's this Friday night, Zootopia. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, a couple of things. For uh, the past uh, 50, uh, I guess, eight years or so, uh, 67 years and all, Vin Scully has been the voice of the Los Angeles Dodgers and has been the unifying force in Southern California. For those of you watching the game uh, on Sunday, it could not have been more magical, as Vinny called uh, his final game in Dodger Stadium, uh, which finished with a 10th inning walk-off home run by the Dodgers to win the game and clinch the National League West pennant. So I would like to ask that our city join with many others throughout Southern California and bring back a resolution declaring October 11th uh, Vin Scully Day in Newport Beach. Uh, secondly, along with Mayor Pro Tim Muldoon, I was privileged to uh, tour the Bay Delta region over the course of this past weekend. Uh, and have an extensive tour about the problems, ecological problems, financial problems, certainly the seismic problems and the risks that uh, face our Southern California water supply. Uh, the governor has put together a thoughtful proposal to tunnel underneath the Delta uh, to provide safe water uh, and a continuation of water to Southern California, while at the same time protecting the fish, the smelt, and uh, the salmon, which I learned quite a bit about in terms of their mating habits and reproductive habits. Uh, and that's a critical part of, of our future uh, in terms of water because we're one earthquake away uh, from uh, salinity, which in the course of one day could take 40% of our water supply and make it inoper in inoperational and unavailable to us. Uh, that's why this project is so critical. Uh, during this week, I also attended the California Public Finance Conference, and this project, in fact, was discussed there uh, because it needs to be bond financed. It's going through its environmental process that's soon to be done. The state uh, Water uh, Resources Board will vote on it. Uh, there is a proposal by a farmer in the uh, San Joaquin Valley uh, to uh, require, it's on your uh, ballot measure, it's uh, Proposition uh, 53, which would require a vote. And this vote is a cynical means simply to try and uh, stop this project. That's why these vote on bonds things are done. Uh, and if that passes, uh, once again, our Southern California water supply will be at uh, great risk. Uh, I was also at the conference talking about the pension issue. It's an issue for all of us and uh, many uh, communities like us are struggling with uh, how to deal with it and effective strategies. So in all in all, it was a very productive conference. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Selich. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, last Sunday, along with uh, Council Members Petros, Curry, and Muldoon, and Mayor Dixon, I attended the, uh, the Balboa Island Centennial Celebration. Uh, Balboa Island was annexed to the city in 1916, and um, it was a great event comes once every hundred years. And no, I wasn't there when it uh, was formed. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah, I, I, I've been getting a lot of that lately. Um, anyway, we started the day off with the dedication of a plaque commemorating the founding of Balboa Island at, um, at Beak Park um, on, uh, on Agate Avenue and uh, had a little commemoration there. 
and then we uh, did a walk um, down Agate and along the, on the Bayfront, and along the way we stopped at the uh, Island Market, and there, if you haven't seen it, you need to go out and see it, but there's a mural that was done um, uh, commemorating the uh, centennial for Balboa Island. Um, a lot of interesting subjects and folks that you might know um, or know of are uh, depicted in the mural. And that was funded, this was all funded by the residents of Balboa Island. And I think that was funded at a cost of around $10,000. And then after uh, stopping there, we then went down the boardwalk to Turquoise and the South Bay front. And we dedicated a, um, a piece of art that the Balboa Island Improvement Association and the residents of Balboa Island donated to the uh, city of Newport Beach. It's called the Sunset Years, the uh, elderly couple sitting on the bayfront uh, walkway bench uh, overlooking the bay in the Balboa Pavilion. And again, that was funded, uh, I think, around $50,000 by the residents of Balboa Island. And then after that, from 1 to 5, there was a celebration on Marine Avenue that went from 1 to 5 with uh, a band, um, food, a uh, little bit of drink, a little bit of merriment. And uh, I, a lot of folks came up to me and said, let's not wait another 100 years to do this again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a, it was a great day. Uh, Mr. Piotr. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I just wanted to announce Corona Del Mar Residents Association is going to be having their political forum for the city council candidates tomorrow night, 5.30 to 8.30 at the Oasis Senior Center. That's all I have. Mr. Duffield. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. I also, uh, as Councilman uh, Curry mentioned, I was up at uh, the Delta Tour, which is very interesting to learn about um, our water sources and how they affect us here in Newport Beach. Uh, one fun fact I learned is that the California Aqueduct started pumping water in 1974, which coincidentally is the exact same year Muldoon's Irish Pub started pumping beer. So I thought that was kind ah. of interesting. <laughs> Uh, I also had the opportunity to participate at the finish line of what's called the Freedom Ride. The Freedom Ride is a great cause that our city and some police officers have taken up to raise awareness about human trafficking, which is a very serious issue in our time. Uh, a couple riders rode, I believe, for 15 days uh, from Oregon down here to California, uh, including uh, Officer David McGill, our Deputy Chief, and uh, Detective Prince. So I want to thank those officers and those citizens that volunteered their time to ride so that others can have awareness about the freedoms that are not enjoyed by all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I have a few announcements for some fun activities going on in the community over the next few weeks. So the 19th annual fire and lifeguard appreciation dinner will be uh, Thursday, next Thursday, September 29th at 5.30 p.m. at the Newport Marriott. This is our time of year that all community members are encouraged and welcome to honor our fire, uh, police, and lifeguard uh, service members. So we hope to see you there. Uh, on this weekend, so October 1st, October, fall already, and uh, October 2nd, we have the Newport Beach Wine and Food Festival. This will be the third annual, and the event is being held right out here on the Civic Center and the community room on the Civic Green. And uh, this, just some FYI, it will be crowded. Parking, if you're coming here, just be mindful that there will be a lot of activity and the setup and breakdown for the event will take a few days. So if you're planning to come to the Civic Center tomorrow, Wednesday through next Monday, you'll see a lot of activity. And if you're interested in attending the event, the tickets are available online at newportwineandfood.com. Leading. Uh, chefs, and a lot of interactive cooking activities. On uh, October 9th, just a couple weekends away, uh, the fire department open house. Every year the fire department hosts an open house to remind our community about fire prevention at home. And this is uh, from 11 to 2 uh, p.m. at fire station number 7 in Santa Ana Heights. It's a great fire station and I think you would all enjoy it. Uh, live demonstrations, plenty of information on fire safety and tours of the fire station and bring the whole family. Uh, and the Newport Beach Firefighters Association is providing free lunch, grilled hamburgers and hot dogs for attendees. So fire station number seven is located on Acacia Street and um, they would love to have you. Plenty of parking. Okay, Art, October 15th, Art in the Park. Newport Beach Arts Foundation, Art in the Park, is on Saturday, October 15th from 10 to 4, right out here again on the Civic Green. This is a popular event, has something for everyone, 
projects for, and art projects for the children. And it's free and offers many fine arts and artisan items for sale. And then presented next is uh, the uh, library exhibit presented by the Newport Beach City Arts Commission, the Half Century Aerial Photography Exhibit on display at the Central Library from October 3rd through December 2nd. The aerial photography will be changed every two weeks during the exhibit and stop by to enjoy the collection of photographs that document the city's history during, uh, and they'll be available during regular opera, uh, library operating hours. And for more information, all this information is on the city's website, on the library's website, newportbeachlibrary.org. So I uh, urge you all to participate in any one of those announcements. Now we'll proceed into the business portion of our evening. And as you saw in the agenda that we are moving forward, item number 15 related to a public hearing. Madam, Madam Mayor, I don't mean to interrupt. Um, okay. We're gonna ask Ms. Brandt to make an announcement oh, as well. Thank you, okay. all right, so another, Hold that thought for a moment. Ms. Brown, Com Director of uh, Community Development, if you would please make yes. a um, statement. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council. I just wanted to inform you that we have received a withdrawal from the applicant for the 150 Newport Center project, which is was a public hearing on uh, your agenda item number 16. So what it means by a withdrawal is that there is no longer an application on the property and that if a future uh, development proposal were to come forward, that there would have to be a new application um, submitted to the city and go through the appropriate entitlement process. But again, there will, there will be no action necessary by the city council this evening because the application has been withdrawn. So in other words, let me just clarify for the public's benefit, there's no public hearing on the item related to 150 Newport 150 Newport Center Drive. That is correct. That was scheduled for number 17, I, agenda item number 17, this e 16 this evening. So please, no, please, please, no, no applause. So uh, we will move on. So thank you very much. So back to uh, resuming where I was, item number 15. This is the time and place fix for the public hearing on protests or objections to the formation of assessment district 114 and 114 B, um, which, excuse me, oh, which is the area bounded by Riverside Avenue, 15th Street, Irvine Avenue, and Cliff Drive. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'll be recusing myself from this conversation oh, as I work for a telecommunications company and have a business conflict. All right, thank you. And uh, Madam Mayor, at the advice of council, because I'm a stockholder in AT&T, I'm advised that I have a conflict of interest and therefore I'm required by law to recuse myself as well. All right, thank you. And do we wanna proceed with a staff report at this time? Do we need a staff report at this time, fellow council members? No, for you? No? No? All right, we will bypass the staff report. So all ballots, I want to just make a point, all ballots regarding assessment district 114 and 114B must be received by the city clerk prior to the closing of the public hearing. And we, since we are not uh, receiving a staff report, are there any questions from council members up here? We will go right into the public hearing. So if this is how we will organize the public hearing, You'll uh, please come forward. If there are many of you, I'd appreciate it. We would appreciate if you would form a single line down the center aisle. First, we want to uh, hear from the, those, anyone who's speaking against the acquisition of the improvements against the assessment district, followed by those who are speaking in favor. And when you come forward, please identify yourself and your address, please. And if you would come forward, we will begin the public hearing if you are against. Please come forward. Council members. My name. Wait a minute. Um, again, Mayor Dixon, city council members. Um, my name is Susan Kopicki and I live on El Medina in um, Newport Heights. Um, I'm here just to put place into the public record that I join many other Newport Heights residents in opposing formation of assess assessment district 114 and 114B, and I just am requesting that that be placed in the public record. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, please. 
My name is Jeannie Phobes. I am a homeowner at 328 Aliso Avenue in Newport Heights, and I also am join, joining other, many other Newport Heights homeowners in opposing the formation of assessment districts to 114 and 114B. Please include my statement in the record of this public hearing on September 27th. Thank you. Mayor. Thank you. Next, please. <coughs> I am Linda Adams. I have two statements to make. First, I am a property owner in Newport Heights. I re reside at 444 Aliso Avenue. I oppose the formation of assessment district 114 and 114B. Please include this in the public records of the public hearing of September 27th. I also would like to make a statement regarding a request we made to city council on um, September 12th regarding a uh, California Public Records Act request for a roster of return documents. And we received from them on September 19th a determination or a statement of a determination that our request did not, uh, did not work in the context of the Public Records Act. Uh, we take exception to that. We do not concur, concur with the cited justification for declining to provide a roster of return ballots. As you know, I hope you know, many of our previous communications, we have documented irregularities in the petition process, which is now history, and in the balloting process, which is now reaching its conclusions. These irregularities and possibly others now cannot be resolved prior to the conclusion of the election. Consequently, we feel we reserve the right to review the roster after the election, and if in consequence of this review we determine that irregularities have in fact occurred, we will have to address that matter at that time, which regrettably may entail a continuance of the undergrounding controversy in 114 and 114B beyond the election. Thank you. Thank you, next please. My name is Ernest Adams. I'm a you do need to speak into the microphone, otherwise people at home can't hear you. Thanks. <clears throat> My name is Ernest Adams. I'm a property owner in Newport Heights. I oppose the formation of assessment district 114 and 114B. Please include this statement in the record of the public hearing on September 27th, 2016. The case has been made in previous hearings that no benefit of any significance will accrue to the community by undergrounding the utilities. And as such, therefore, it is, constitutes a waste of money. Undergrounding in principle is a good idea, but in Newport Heights, it doesn't apply. It is a waste of money, and that case has been made in several previous uh, hearings. Thank you. Thank you, next please. My name is Georgia Johnson. I live at 547 Aliso Avenue. Newport Beach in Newport Heights, and I am opposed to the formation of Assessment District 114 and 114B. Please include my statement in the record of this public hearing on September 27, 2016. Thank you. Next, please. I'm Jerry Ferguson. I own property at 519 El Medina Avenue in Newport Heights, and I oppose the formation of this assessment district, 114, 114B, and I'd like my statement put into the record of this meeting. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. My name is Diane Byers. I live at 535 Tustin Avenue in Newport Heights. I'm opposed to the formation of assessment district 114 and 114B. Please include my statement in the record of this public hearing on September 27th, 2016. Thank you. Next, please. My name is Frank Wilford. I'm opposed to, uh, oh, 438 Fullerton Avenue. And I'm opposed to the formation of assessment district 114 and 114B. Please include my statement in the record of this public hearing on September 27th, 2016. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Next, please. My name is Michael Barnett. Um, I'm a trustee of um, the property at 518 Fullerton Avenue in Newport Heights, and I'm opposed to the formation of the assessment district 114 
and 114B, please include my statement in the record of this public hearing on September 27th, 2016. Thank you. Next, please. Hi, my name is Simone Wilson. I live at 427 El Medina in Newport Heights. And um, I also oppose uh, this assessment district and I'd like that to go on the record. But I just again wanted to say, I just feel like this isn't, it's just an unfair assessment on people, especially people who are on a fixed income, people who've been in the area a long time, weren't expecting to incur a potentially really large cost if it does pass. and. I just wanted to encourage people to think that through. I don't know if anybody's still holding a ballot here tonight that's gonna get turned in, but um, the idea of a, a large assessment like this on, on everybody as a result of this vote um, sounds unfair to me and I just don't like it. <laughs> so I just wanted to get that out there and appreciate the job y'all do. Thanks for taking my comments. Thank you. Now if there are no opposing votes, if those in favor would please come forward. Good evening, Madam Mayor, uh, members of the council. My name is Niall Barrett. I live on 445 Tustin Avenue, and I am in favor of the formation of assessment districts 114 and 114B. Um, please include my statement in the, public, in the record of this public hearing. And I would also like to thank staff and yourselves for getting us to this stage where we can just get an up-down vote. Much appreciated. Thank, thank you. you. Hi, my name is Mike Hefner. I live at 422 Fullerton Avenue. I am a strong supporter of uh, Assessment District 114 and 114B. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Hi, I'm David Fultz. I live at 519 Fullerton Avenue, and I strongly support the Assessment District. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Scott Barnard. I'm a 30-year resident at 510 Tustin Avenue, and I'm a in support of Assessment District 114 and 114B. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Dixon and members of the council, my name is Jim Mosher. I do not live in the Assessment District or proposed district. However, I wanted to take issue with the abstract that I see in the staff report. It says that on August 9th, the City Council approved the engineer's report and declared your intention tonight to levy an assessment and issue bonds if there was a majority vote by the property owners. Now, the idea that all you have to do is look at how many ballots are cast on one side or the other is very convenient to you and it removes you apparently from all political heat about the matter. But I would like to point out that this is an issue in which you have a possible majority vote of people wanting to impose something against the will of a minority. And the idea that the majority always wins is not a central tenet of American democracy. In fact, in a representative democracy, it's very important for you as representatives to make sure that the rights of the minority, and they do have property rights, are assured. Uh, so what I wanted to say is if the vote comes back and it is more than 50% yes, it's not a done deal, and if you look carefully at your resolution 2016-103 that you passed on August 9th, it does not actually say what the abstract says. It says if there's a majority vote, you may create a district. It does not say you have to. So the decision as you have, what, whether you should or should not, is still a decision that you have to make. And then finally, I would like to add to that that the most reasonable suggestion I heard at any of the previous hearings about this is that perhaps you should impose a system where the majority, those who support the project, if they are the majority, those who support pay for the undergrounding of those who do not want it. I think if that was the condition, you would get a very true assessment of how strong the support for the undergrounding is. Are those who want it willing to pay for those who don't? Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Charles Globe, 457 Tustin Avenue. First of all, I want to tell you I appreciate the process. I've enjoyed it, and I am a supporter of the formation of 114 and 114B. Thank you. Thank you. Andy, any other comments in favor? Please come forward. 
All right. Uh, seeing none, before uh, we close the public hearing, um, Mr. Kiff, do you have any comments to make on any of the issues that were raised? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. We do have some comments. I, I think maybe the city clerk, Leilani Brown, has some comments. And then I do, again, before you close the public hearing, if anyone has a ballot that needs to be handed in right now is your last chance to do it. So please come up and, and give that to us. If you don't, that's okay too. But this, this is kind of just the last chance. And then Leilani. I just want to let council know that I am aware that the city received an email suggesting that one individual was delivering multiple ballots as a courtesy, but pursuant to city council policy L28, ballots must be returned by mail or delivered in person by the record owners. I know of no instance where multiple ballots were submitted by one individual as suggested by the email. If such delivery were attempted, only ballots delivered by the record owner would be accepted. So I am confident that the delivery of ballots in this instant was in all aspects consistent with council policy L28. All right, thank you. Mr. City Attorney, did you have any comment? Anyone? No, I think that that pretty much summarized the issues that have been raised. The only other thing that uh, was mentioned was the Public Records Act request and whether the denial was appropriate. And uh, we took a look at that issue with the city clerk and we do believe that denial was appropriate because the ballots and the information related there too is private until uh, after the ballots have basically been counted. After that, they become public record, but until that time, um, they are private. Okay, and staff, any other comments? So no? ju just again, as I, I know the city clerk's uh, office will go and, and manage the ballot counting, that is a public process you can sit and watch. It's happening in the room behind us. And then um, we, we do imagine that this will take a little bit of time. We thought there would be a hearing on 150 Newport Center while that occurred. So. Uh, there's not much left on the agenda, so I need to apologize in advance if we're wait your your you folks are waiting a little bit as the count occurs. So we'll talk slowly. Any, any other comments by Leilani? Uh, yes, I just like to add that those counting the ballots have been deputized to do so. Okay, so I am closing the public hearing on this matter, and we will continue with the agenda, and we'll talk slowly until <laughs> until the results are tabulated. Um, Madam Clerk. All right. Public comment on consent calendar. This is the time in which council members may pull items from the consent calendar for discussion. Those are items one through 14. Public comments are invited on consent calendar for member, from members of the audience. Speakers must limit comments to three minutes. Before speaking, please state your name for the record. If any item is removed from the consent calendar by a council member, members of the public are invited to speak on each item for up to three minutes per item. All matters listed under consent calendar are considered to be routine and will all be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. Council members have received detailed staff reports on each of the items recommending an action. There will be no separate discussion of these items prior to the time the City Council votes on the motion unless members of the City Council request specific items to be discussed and are removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Okay, let's go down the Council. Any items to poll? Mr. Petros. Mr. Curry. I'd like to record an abstention on item one, the minutes. I was not here at the last meeting and I'd like to poll item three. Mr. Selich. No items. Uh, Mr. Pe Piotr. Uh, item number six, just like a, a brief staff explanation for the public record. For which? Six, please. Number six. Just a uh, clarification? Yeah, just a staff explanation. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Duffield? I have none. And Mayor Pro Tem? I have none. All right. So we will go to public hearing on all items on the consent calendar with the exception of item three. And do you want a discussion, Mr. Piotr, on item six or just a clarification? Are you pulling item six? Yeah, pull item six for staff. All right, so it's item th with the exception of items three and six, we'll have public comments on the consent calendar. Any comments on the consent calendar? Seeing none, we'll come back to council. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, do you want to make a motion? on the remaining items on the calendar. It's just point of clarification. It's consent calendars, items one through 14 now. 
Okay, correct. Sorry, then there's a recusal from myself already uh, in there for 15. So I move the balance of a consent calendar items 1 through 14. Clarifications on item number 11 from uh, staff. Recusal on item 15. Uh, for, oh, sorry, that's myself. Excuse me. Withdraw that. Uh, <laughs> that's quite complicated. <laughs> uh, with item 3 pulled by Councilman Curry, item 6 pulled by Councilman Piotr, and abstention on item 1 by Councilman Curry. Oh, second. All right. Let's call for the vote. Motion carries unanimously, 7-0. All right, uh, now we'll go to item number three, Mr. Curry. Uh, well, thank you, let me ask staff a couple of questions. Uh, this item appeared on the consent calendar without going through uh, a study session or without being put on for discussion. What was the genesis of this item? So Mr. Curry and, and council members, uh, the genesis of this item was uh, myself and uh, public information manager Tara Finnegan struggling with a couple of different issues associated with candidate forums. One, we didn't have clear authorization by the council to waive fees for the rental of rooms in city facilities. So uh, that was desirable to have that authorization in a council policy to waive fees. Um, and secondly, uh, in, in years past, we had televised or authorized the televising of about three different forums, Speak Up Newports, um, Feet to the Fire, and the West Newport Beach Association. And this was the first year where we had more requests and we uh, in part inadvertently granted Wake Up Newport the televising because we televise every Wake Up Newport show and it happened to be a county, uh, candidate forum. So I wanted some more guidance on that as well as to what gets televised. So it was my choice to bring that forward to the council. Did any council member come to you with ideas for what ought to be in this policy? Uh, Mr. Piotr did, yes. And what were his ideas that ought to be inc incorporated in this policy? Um, it, it, about a, a, a more direct uh, selection process as to um, how someone might apply for a fee waiver and then uh, get televised. And we typically have a policy for how council members request things to go to the agenda. Did that process get followed in Mr. Piotr's request? Well, as I explained to Mr. Piotr, um, I was bringing something like this up anyway, so I didn't have an issue in including some of his comments in that. No. And I, if, I apologize if that's uh, been a different pers or a perspective that, that is not one you're used, uh, that, that was appropriate in this case. To me, it felt appropriate. Well, I think it's certainly appropriate for you to seek guidance on how to waive fees. And uh, I think we ought to be doing everything we can to encourage people in the community to have candidate forums and for all the things that we put on Newport Beach TV. Lord knows, given the state of the media today, that I think every single candidate forum, and I've watched three of them that I missed because I was traveling on YouTube that have been up, put up by somebody because somebody made a video of them, and that's the only way voters have any opportunity to see what people are saying in these forums where only 50 people can sometimes attend. I saw one of them had been viewed more than 500 times. Uh, I think that's a tremendous public service and of all the things that we do with Newport Beach TV, I can't think of anything that's more valuable to the community. Now I was interested in Mr. Piotr's involvement in the background of this because the way this policy is drafted, very specific individuals and groups are targeted to have to pay a fee where others get a fee, a free opportunity. For example, the forum shall be uh, nonpartisan and the local organization shall be nonpartisan and not endorse any candidates. Well, this year, uh, the Democratic Women hosted a forum. I was uh, there. It was one of the most well done forums that we had during the election cycle. In past years, Dick Nichols and his California Republican Assembly have used the Bonita Creek Park to host his candidate forum. And uh, although a lot of his members don't live in the city, Nonetheless, I think it was a completely legitimate forum for him to hold and to use in a public facility. That's why we build these public facilities. Uh, we go on and talk about uh, the organizations can't have been an advocate for or against a ballot measure or candidate. I would remind everybody, some of the council members weren't here then, but in 2008 we had a special election on the location of City Hall in February. Just about everybody in town took a position one way or the other on that ballot measure and those 
organizations could have been prohibited from using a city facility uh, for hosting a candidate forum, having done so because of the timing of that particular special election. We note that you can't have a political action committee within the past 12 months. Well, Spawn has one. Spawn is one of the most long-standing organizations in the community. They don't always agree with me, uh, but certainly they have uh, engaged in the community and have every right to use our facilities to hold a facility. And then there's a section here, it can't be hosted by a single individual, which I presume is aimed at me, because I did that this year, but Gene Watt could be someone else who could host one or anybody in the community. It's not clear, by the way, that Feet to the Fire, which is a, is a loose confederation of media organizations, would qualify as a community organization. So what I think this is, is a very thinly veiled and very poorly uh, worded attempt to uh, limit the campaign forums in the next election cycle by people who may not want to talk in front of a specific group and to try and extract money out of them uh, to keep them from having these forums. I think it undermines democracy in our community. It is utterly contrary to uh, voter participation. And I'm completely against this policy which tries to solve a problem that we really don't have. Please, no clapping, please. Please, please. Um, any other comments from uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem? Thank you. You know, this actually is a great policy because we don't need neo-Nazis or uh, other political parties that we can't control showing up with PACs and money using taxpayer funds to perpetuate their political agenda. You know, I don't want the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, the Green Party, or any party perpetuating their message with taxpayer dollars. I have a problem with that, and I think that this is a, a, a sensible way. If we say, look, we're gonna avoid any radicals or anyone abusing our system, by saying nothing political at all. So uh, there are some things that I think could use a change, like for example, um, I think it's okay if the group had a position on an initiative. Um, so I think it would be okay to strike the ballot measure aspect of this, but I definitely want the groups to not be for-profit like lobbying groups, uh, to not be political like different political groups where you have competing uh, political ideology, to be legitimate local groups they're concerned about local issues and don't have an agenda with taxpayer dollars. If you have a political agenda, you're able to use a facility, but you can't film it uh, with the, at everyone else's expense. And this is something that we think is not a problem now. But when the right group comes along and they want to uh, send a message that you don't agree with with your money, I think you're going to be frustrated by it. So I, I think for the sake of, um, of putting the local community organizations first, um, and not having to be taken over by different political groups, uh, we've got to protect the city, um, uh, the city funds from abuse. So uh, I would make a motion to accept this staff report with a couple of changes that include nonpartisan groups that do not have a PAC and have not had a PAC um, forever. I don't believe 12 months is long enough because in the city, a group that's um, that wants to not have a PAC for a year and they perpetuate their message with taxpayer funds, uh, that they should be a locally based nonprofit because some nonprofits we know are not actually nonprofits, they have political agendas as well. Um, and I would move to strike from six uh, that they can't have a particular position on a ballot measure. I think it's fine for the residents of Newport Beach um, to be involved with ballot measures. It's different from being involved with a political ideology with taxpayer funds. Um, and I believe that this actually should be a decision not left up to council, because council can become political, but should be deferred instead uh, to the city manager under his power uh, and discretion regarding the legitimacy of a local nonprofit. So you made a motion? Is yes. Second. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Piatter, you're next in line to speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, one of the things that brought this to my attention, uh, Mr. Curry's right, is his forum that he had, his so-called job interview uh, for his replacement. Uh, but part of it is, you're, this is also something the incumbents tend to take advantage of. And we've got state laws against us as council people, water board members, whatever, from even putting their picture in a newsletter prior to an election at taxpayer expense. The whole concept of using taxpayer money to 
run your campaign or to get political advantage, usually it's by the incumbents. Uh, you know, that's not covered in this situation with the existing state law, so it makes sense to uh, go ahead and uh, put, a, put a new policy in place that levels the playing field, and we're not, Mr. Curry likes to believe or presented it as though we're stopping somebody from being able to have a forum, which is hardly the case. All we're saying is that, as Mr. Muldoon pointed out, it's not gonna be funded by taxpayers. It's going to be at their own expense, uh, and obviously that's part of freedom of speech, being able to rent a facility, and we're not gonna discriminate against them or their ability to rent a city facility if they wanna have their forum in a, in a city facility. And obviously, just like some of these other forums, they've been taped not by Newport Beach TV, but by private entities and put on YouTube for the public to enjoy. And I, I look at it as more of a protection of taxpayers, not any kind of a stifling of free speech. Uh, but I, I don't think that we ought to fund as taxpayers partisan presentations. And you know, Mr. Curry's job interview was just that. He was very partisan in the whole thing. He presented it to city staff as though it was going to be a forum, like Mayor Dixon or others have had, and it wasn't. It was a very partisan, very biased uh, event, a forum, which, you know, we expect that for the candidates, but the forum itself shouldn't be, and it certainly shouldn't be funded by taxpayer dollars. Um, Mr. Muldoon, I, I think the only concern I have about your amendments is we've got it stated in there that they have to present during a certain time of the year, and you're changing it from staff approving it to council. I think we ought to also include in that a provision that staff would present uh, the proposed criteria each election cycle for the council approval prior to receiving any applications. So that way we can always stay updated as far as the criteria that isn't in the uh, most of it I would expect would be repeated by what's in this policy, but eventually, sometimes you're gonna need to tweak it, so. Well, I think that could be amended at the time. Um, and I just, for the record, um, uh, my issue is not with Councilman Curry doing the forum, um, although I respect Councilman Piotr's position. You know, my issue is just the using of taxpayer funds to further a political agenda, and I don't think that's appropriate. Um, so, uh, I respectfully, um, think that my motion uh, uh, deals with it the best way possible at this time, Mr. Piotr, uh, and could be amended uh, down the road if we found that there was some abuse or the city manager felt that um, he was being inundated with groups that were abusing this, which I doubt will happen actually, um, or, uh, or, or the criteria was, was vague and confusing such that participants did not know how uh, to comply with it. Mr. Selich. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I'm opposed to any change in the existing policy. Um, I've been involved in city politics for 21 and a half years. This has never come up before. We have had forum after forum. Back in 2006, I think we even had more forums than this year because we had so many candidates running. I think we had 12 forums this year, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I think this is something that's best left in the hands of the staff to administer and use their common sense judgment on how to administer. We haven't had a problem in this in 21 years and all of a sudden this year it becomes a problem, it really mystifies me. And this whole thing of not putting the, um, the videos up on our, on our city website, I pulled the scope of services that uh, we have with Visit Newport Beach and uh, every two years they're obligated to give us 4,400 hours of, um, of um, production time and if you figure that uh, each one of these forums takes two to four hours to go, that's uh, less than 1% of, uh, of the time going to these forums that go on our city website that help inform our citizens. I mean, what's, what's more important, Pick a Pet or uh, one of the other programs on the, uh, on the um, channel or informing our citizens what's going on with the, uh, with the different candidates and their positions and presenting information to the voters. So, I, I mean, I just don't get it why we're even talking about it. I mean, I, this kind of reminds me of uh, what we did on, our, on all of the services we were providing to community organizations, whether it was for the 
Race for the Cure, or the Balboa Island Parade, or the Christmas Walk. We used to provide those services, and we set up this, this uh, qualification system, and we've kind of made a mess of it. And I just see this being another mess on who's going to be chosen, how are we going to do it, you know, we've got a good staff, we've got a good city manager, uh, let's, let's let the staff handle it. It's, it's worked for 21 years or probably more than that, so I see no reason to change it now. And Mr. Curry? Well, I agree completely with uh, Councilman Selich. In fact, it's worked for 110 years without any problems, and it worked well this year, frankly. We've had greater citizen participation, more people coming out to more and more different forums sponsored by different groups, and that's all been to the benefit of transparency. It's all been to the benefit of a broader dialogue within the community. It's all been to the benefit of having our voters to be more educated, which I think is the thing that Mr. Piotr is the most afraid of. And the small-minded pettiness of his approach uh, for those of you who were there, and many of you were, and the press was there, uh, the District 7 Forum, all the candidates were invited, all the qu candidates were asked questions. It was recorded, and it's up on YouTube, so you can watch it, and you can read how the press reported it. And I think it was a forum that uh, provided great information to the voters in my district. And I think every forum that I've either seen on television, and I've seen all of them, or have been to in person, and I've been to every one that I've been in town to see, have done the same thing. There is simply nothing more that we can do as a city to promote civic participation than to host these forums. And when we talk about using taxpayers' money, what we're talking about is to allow groups to use an otherwise empty city facility like Oasis or the Newport Coast Community Center or the City Hall right here without paying a fee for it. That's what we're talking about when we're talking, when they say we're using taxpayer dollars. It's using an otherwise empty building to host the forum. So don't be fooled. This is simply another cynical, small-minded attempt uh, to manipulate the political process in the election coming up by people who are afraid to answer questions from real voters. Uh, can I just interject a couple of questions? Mr. Kiff, do you want to uh, speak to, um, other than Mr. Piotr's impetus, uh, you felt that the current policy lacked yeah. some what? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Well, I didn't see where I had the clear authorization to waive the fee for any community group's rental of the facility. And I didn't see where I had the uh, direction to say that all forums get televised by NT MBTV or just the three that we had done traditionally. And this did come up actually because of the Corona Mar Resident Association. They said, well, why can't we be televised? And it was already kind of fairly late in the process. And I just said, no, we didn't set up a budget for that. And that was a bit arbitrary on my part. And I, so I thought we should have a policy in that regard. And uh, another question is to clarify, could you explain to me what happens with the um, tape, videotape of a f taped event? How long does that stay in our archives or is accessible? Actually, Tara may know more than I do on that. NBTV programming stays in our archives. I think currently we go back to 2010, or maybe even further, and that will stay in our archives until it's eventually we meet the clerk's uh, record retention policy. I should say we, there was a practice, it wasn't a policy, where we were streaming through the website, MBTV live streams, right now people can watch it as we're sitting here, but we weren't posting just the videos of the candidate forums. And Dave and I talked about this, and Michael Torres from the city attorney's office, and we can't recall why that practice was started, but we can easily change that practice to put those tapes up on the, uh, the website. The city website. Yes. Which actually I think would be a good idea. In the interest, as Mr. Curry says, of transparency and open and access. So to put some uh, clarity around the existing practice into policy and to retain the archival record, I think, for a period of time. You could determine that. Um, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, well, did you have another question? Uh, just a, a statement. The, the, a statement by Councilman Keith Curry about 100 years uh, I think uh, he's speaking to the facilities, which I guess I'm sort of bifurcating the two, because the facilities, uh, I think, should be pretty indiscriminately offered to anyone uh, who even claims to be a community group, even though we're not. Um, what I'm concerned about is the filming, and uh, Airfare, CDM, Resident Association, these are the perfect groups that should be filmed. That's the kind of dialogue, these are the legitimate community groups that I think we should see the forums from, and I encourage them. The ones I'm concerned about are, can a pro for a profit, can a developer uh, do this? Um, can, a, can a political group, uh, which is funded by the taxpayers, these are the groups I'm specifically um, 
interested. That's why I think it's important that it be um, you know, a bona fide uh, community uh, organization, local nonprofit, um, a nonpartisan, non, non uh, PAC oriented, uh, not for profit entity that's trying to use your tax dollars to sway an election. So that's the distinction that I wanted to draw uh, to address Councilman Curry's valid point. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Duffield. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just um, <clears throat> would say that I don't think we're changing anything. I believe staff is asking for help and we're providing it just to make it a, a little more clear for the future. Uh, Mr. Petros. Madam Mayor, thank you. Um, yes, in fact, staff is asking for help. Uh, and clearly off this dais, we're making sausage right now, and I don't think that that's the best interest of policy. So I would instead offer a substitute motion that would request staff to come back to the council at a study session, identifying what the matter is with the current forum activities, giving us precise indications as to those threats, who the groups are, and what is a reasonable alternative policy measure? Second. Any comments about the substitute motion? Uh, Mr. Selich. Well, again, I'm gonna oppose the substitute motion. I just don't think we need to do anything. You know, we're supposed to be the council that's trying to create less government. We're creating more rules, more regulations, more bureaucracy. We've got a staff, we've got a good intelligence staff, let them use their judgment on this and let's stay out of it. Okay, any other comments up here? Well, yeah, I, uh, I, I support Mr. Petros's motion. I will draw my motion, support his, and I look forward to um, letting the residents know that we will not let for-profit entities use your tax dollars to spew their agenda, uh, and we will not let partisan politics be used against you uh, uh, with, with your tax dollars. Okay, any other comments up here? Let's go out to the public. If you have a comment, please come forward. My name is Dennis Baker, um, and I have an affiliation with a couple of the organizations that were mentioned. I'm on the Corona Del Mar Resident Association Board, and I'm also a treasurer for SPAWN. I'm not speaking for either organization at this moment. Um, just to hit on a couple of things. I, I understand where city manager Kiff is coming from. He needs a little bit of guidance. I have to confess, I didn't even know this was on the agenda until I walked in tonight and saw it. So I have some real concerns about that. Um, I wanna point out a couple of things that really, really disturbed me about what Pro Tem uh, Muldoon said. He made the statement groups we can't control, and I have a really huge problem with anybody that, especially in government position, that refers to controlling groups. And this is actually a, a, a public speech issue, it's a presentation and so on, so that really raises the hackles, my hackles. So the other thing is, um, as was explained, the, the cable company that carries this does essentially owe the city time. So I'm not sure where the cost to city comes in, the, the, that somehow this is costing the city a lot of money. Um, also, just a correction, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Muldoon, airfare is a pack, and you just said a minute ago that example of organizations such as airfare, and airfare is a political action committee that um, is associated, certainly not controlled in any way by SPAWN, but we have a, a relationship and have, in, in many, many instances, uh, work with them to get informational information out regarding the airport, but it is a pack. Uh, and then I think there's a real irony to me, as you all know, I've been pushing to try and get the planning commissions televised. And so it's, maybe it's not an irony, but it's, it seems like almost a parallel effort. Um, you on the council denied um, that idea. Um, some people support it, so not all of you. So we're not doing it. Spawn is having to, at our expense, uh, videotape and post, uh, video record and post all of those planning commission meetings. And now we have something else that's coming in re regarding to the restriction of the use of the city facilities for recording, providing the public, and 
contributing to transparency and participation, and I'm kind of seeing a pattern here, and it's a very disturbing pattern. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, please. Mayor. Oh, Mr. Yeah, can Sam? I answer one of Mr. Baker's questions? What it is, uh, Dennis, is that uh, under our agreement with uh, uh, Newport Beach and Company, they provide 2,208 hours a year of production services to us. So that's the time to put the video together, edit it, film it, all of that. So that's, that's the public, the, pe the old PEG component of the uh, local cable TV channel. That's how, we, that's how we deal with it now. Next, please. Uh, yes, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is George Schroeder, and I've been a um, Newport Beach resident since 1987. I've been involved in city council candidate, candidate forum since the 1990s. I've moderated quite a few over the past 15, 20 years. Um, I just want to say that I would appreciate if the forum that I did moderate this year for the West Newport Beach Association, and that association began in 1956, it's the probably one of the oldest associations and our form always has been recorded for NBTV. If it could be put on the online streaming, it's not online now. Um, the Speak Up New Newport Forum, which I used to be involved in for 20 years, their meetings are always put on the online streaming. The uh, Chamber, of, Chamber of Commerce Wake Up Newport meetings are on the streaming a lot. Our form is not. So I would appreciate very much if that could be included. As to this actual uh, item on the consent calendar, I looked at it because as I said, I've, I've been involved in city council candidates forums. I think I've been involved in a forum that everybody up there on the dais has participated in, in, in the past. I think you all will agree that the forums I've been involved in have been even-handed forums where each council candidate felt that it was an even playing field. Um, these forums are good for the public to view. There are forums like that out there, so um, I just hope that it can be put uh, on the, and then also our form, looking at the TV schedule twice now, I've set my, uh, my watch so I could watch it on TV. It didn't come up as it was scheduled to be on TV. So that's very disappointing to me, okay. Um, Anyways, I do, I'm not as concerned about the item as some people are because if indeed city manager Dave Kipp did ask for direction, and if that's where it did originate, we're not always gonna have Dave Kipp and every council person that's up here now, I mean, you know, three of you are going to be gone in two months. These guys are going to be gone in eight years. We do need a policy in place for city managers so we can regulate these forms a bit. And I don't believe all regulation is bad. City staff worked very hard for two or three months on the short-term lodging Airbnb, and then we had a council member say, I just don't like regulation, it should all go away. Where the residents went to meetings for months and months and said, please give us some regulation. The person goes, I don't like regulation. It all just up in smoke. Regulation is a good thing sometimes, thank you. Thank you, next please. Good evening, uh, my name is Tabuhi Karim and I'm a resident of Newport Beach since 1990. And um, uh, I am actually the uh, chair, media chair for the Newport Beach Women's Democratic Club and we did host a forum for the candidates. Um, my understanding is that city council is a nonpartisan body and um, the fact that a democratic club based in Newport Beach was hosting a nonpartisan forum uh, does not make the event a partisan event. We also hosted the Newport Beach, the, the, the Newport Mesa um, uh, uh, School Board, and that is also a nonpartisan um, board. And so my question is, how can you decide that uh, an organization is a partisan organization if the event that they are sponsoring is nonpartisan? The other issue also is that um, while we did not pay the fee to, to OASIS, we did pay for the time that the staff allocated to us. We did pay for um, certain overhead costs involved 
in uh, renting the facility, and we didn't. We were not provided videotaping, which we were not aware that was what could have been available to us. And so it would have been nice if we had had that facility. We had to pay our own video videographer, to, uh, who. Uh, 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 paid for uh, that that uh, recorded the, the, the session. So I would actually, uh, before you decide that uh, all partisan organizations cannot have access to facilities, please bear in mind uh, the event that it is held for. And uh, I also want to uh, bring to your attention uh, the fact that uh, an organization like the NBWDC does attract a segment of Newport Beach residents that are not normally have been involved in uh, political activities. And I think it's, it's a very healthy thing for um, people who are of maybe a slightly different orientation who are being drawn into the political process. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tim Stokes, Santa Ana Heist, uh, neighborhood and horse country, hee-haw. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Muldoon, I really have an issue with groups we can't control. I think that is probably something that you'll wish you would never have said. Okay. That, uh, no, I, I, yeah, I, your I, explanation. I also, I also serve on the, the airfare pack which is somebody you said was, would be able to uh, uh, do a televised event. So it is a pack. So some of your information is incorrect. And also serve online in the sand, who in which took out of our funds this year to tape, videotape every one of the forums that, that was presented and is up on the YouTube channel on, on, on line in the sand, pack.com. So I, I really think that controlling groups is a wrong answer in today's government. I think free speech, I think difference of opinions are all welcome. Even if it's not my opinion, I still welcome other people's opinion, even though it's not mine. It makes us for a stronger city and a community and, 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 a, and as, a, as, as, a, as a whole for the, for the whole United States, it makes people much better in that way. So. I, I really disagree with controlling of people. Thank you. Uh, do you want to? Oh, no. Well, yeah, uh, please take a seat, Tim. Look forward to addressing your issues, because um, that's not what I meant. And I'm sure that you know that based on my voting record, that's not what I meant. But Mr. Mosher, go ahead. Uh, Mayor Dixon and members of the council, I agree with uh, Councilman Curry and Councilman Petros that trying to develop a policy on the consent calendar is not, not the best approach, especially when it's gonna be a controversial one. And it seems abundantly clear tonight that there's too many loose ends in this, whether you wanted to adopt something or not. There's nothing clearly in writing yet for you to adopt. So I don't think you can really go ahead with that. And I would add on, ab absent the death or resignation of one of the council members, the city manager does not really need advice on any count candidate forums until 2018, two years from now. So I don't see any urgency about the matter. And then finally to clarify what public information officer Finnegan said, it's not just Mr. Schroeder's West Newport organization whose forum is not available on demand on the city website. None of the forums that were filmed by NBTV this year are available on the website. And I would just suggest as a general policy, unrelated to political forums, anything that is broadcast over NBTV should be available on demand on the city's website. If it's worth broadcasting, it's worth making available to the public. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Please come forward. All right, coming back to council, Mr. Muldoon, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Um, so those who know me and my voting know I have a libertarian bent. Uh, so I'm not talking about freedom of speech at all, or even regulation. I'm talking about a Reagan concept, subsidizing. I don't believe taxpayer dollars should be spent to promote one particular message over another. Now, when I said groups we can't control, I don't mean I'm nefariously wringing my hands saying I want to control them. I mean that if you allow one group, group of any partisan persuasion or any political ideology to speak, constitutionally, you cannot stop another group from doing so. 
So rather than having a push back and forth between different groups who want to spend taxpayer dollars, subsidized dollars, to push their agenda, I'd assume have it be nonpartisan, nonprofit, local groups. Now in the case of airfare, um, that is my inevity and I apologize for that because that is a, although it's a PAC, you're right, that's a group that, should, that I think is, is cause driven, not partisan driven, and uh, is the kind of group that I think should be able to have a forum filmed even with subsidized tax dollars. So what I'm talking about um, is, is partisan. It's the idea that the taxpayers of Newport Beach are paying for someone from another political party to get their agenda out or the message out. The way to do that is, you know, you could do an op-ed, you can buy commercials, you can do mail. That's the way traditionally it's done. And you could be like Reagan, you can raise the money yourself and have, a, have an hour-long show. That's the way politics, I believe, should be done. I don't believe in publicly subsidizing messages. If it needs public subsidies, it's probably not that good of a message. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Well, it would be, which would have been helpful, I think, if uh, Mayor Pro Tim Muldoon had attended some of these forums because they were competing candidates answering the same question and demonstrating their own individual positions on it. It was not partisan groups advocating a partisan position. But yet you see the slippery slope we're on because he's determined that airfare is one of those political action committees that he thinks is okay, but maybe the Democratic women not so much, or maybe Spawn not so much. So what you have now is the city council picking and choosing and trying to develop the, the, the platform for forums and trying to limit those which get broadcast because perhaps they made the decision already for which forums they're not going to participate in in the next election coming up. That seems to have been a strategy by some candidates in this election. So let's be clear. We're talking about allowing community groups to use community buildings that would otherwise be empty to host all of the candidates to make a presentation of where they stand on the issues so that the community can be informed about the issues and the stands of those candidates. And I would point out that until this very election cycle, the Chamber of Commerce was affiliated with a political action committee and they would not be able to put either Wake Up Newport or the, or the forums that they host under this policy if they were to go back to doing that. It's simply a means for people to sort of pick and choose where they're going to be to punish people they presume to be their political enemies. It is so small-minded and petty to be absurd. Now, I, like Councilman Selish, believe that we should simply kill this idea. Now, it was, let's remember, too, that it was brought up, uh, it's ostensibly brought up because of the city manager seeking guidance, but in the process, Mr. Piotr was able to influence some of these specific uh, recommendations, so Mr. Moser is actually wrong. We have a full-blown resolution ready to go in our council packet that was fully cooked behind the scenes in the back room by Mr. Piotr to get his ideas and his favorite groups in here and his unfavored groups out. That's simply wrong. And we're walking down the slippery slope to a kind of political uh, environment in our community that I don't think any of us want. Mr. Selich. Yeah, well, let me uh, clarify my position on this a little bit more perhaps. I think that any group that wants to host a candidate's forum, that we ought to allow them to use our facilities at no cost. I think that we ought to allow it to be broadcast on Newport Beach TV. For example, this year we had 12 um, forums, as I understand it, in town. I think four of them were broadca broadcast on TV. One asked to be broadcast and it wasn't. Um, but let's just say all 12 wanted to have their, their forums broadcast and use the facilities for free. Yeah, how much money that would be? It would be about $1,000 average forum for the film crew, a couple hundred dollars to rent the room. So it's about $1,200 or $15,000. That's if everyone wanted to do it. We got a $250 million a year budget and we're sitting here worrying about $15,000. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I don't understand why we wouldn't want to let anyone that wants to put on a forum get out there and put on a forum. The uh, you know, I guess someday if we had 60 forums wanting to go on, that might be a problem. But at that point in time, the staff could bring it back to the council. But 21 years, with, we haven't seen it, and probably before that. So I just think we're creating a problem here where a problem doesn't exist. Um, Mr. Mr. Baldoon, did you go again? Yeah, you know, um, I'm so saddened to hear someone who I sometimes consider a friend, Councilman Curry, um, take a swipe at me. Um, I have attended some of these forums. Um, 
I really don't appreciate um, the smug rudeness, and I think that's what the city's tired of. And there's something wrong when a council member holds a, quote, job interview at taxpayer funds to ask the questions he wants to ask to try to shape an election using taxpayer funds. And uh, I think the city of Newport Beach is a civilized city that doesn't like this insider baseball, which actually the, the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce had their own pack, and they were using funds from fees from businesses who just want to be active in the business to elect the candidates that they had in mind. It, I just don't think this is the role of government. I don't think taxpayer funds should be used to sway elections. And I, I would agree that we should look at what PACs or how long their PAC may be existed. Now I see the wisdom of the one-year preclusion from not having to pack Mr. Kiff in the staff report because we could get into trouble with, uh, with some local groups that have had a PAC uh, but fit the exact reason of having subsidized film forums. Uh, but the thought of using public funds just to push someone's personal agenda, um, whether it's a job interview or some sort of a uh, feigned forum, which is uh, with fixed questions and uh, derogatory statements about other candidates, um, or some political party pushing their agenda with taxpayer funds. It, it's just not in the spirit of the city. Uh, Mr. Piotr. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Do we have a date, Mr. Kiff, that we can bring this back? That's really up to you folks. Um, as Actually, I think Mr. Courier, Mr. Selich noted that this wouldn't apply this this year anyway, so if you wanted to wait a while or bring it back in October, either way works for us. Okay, I guess it depends on when, when you want to bring it back, but yeah, I have a problem. Mr. Curry's ideas don't sell in the public square, so he's got to use taxpayer dollars to do it, and then he calls those who object to his ideas small-minded. I'm tired of it. You know, I, I don't think the taxpayers ought to be footing the bill either. So however you want to do it. All right, so uh, where are we? Mr. Petros, your motion is still on the table with a second. Who is the second? You second? Okay, shall we, call for the, shall we call for the vote? So is everybody in staff clear on the motion? You clear oh, why don't you, Sorry. you want to just repeat that? It's, as I understand it, um, it's, it's to continue this to a study session at a, date, at a future date with more detailed uh, background information. I think that will be helpful. I think there are a lot of loose ends, like Mr. Mosier mentioned, and um, see where there is an opportunity to bring clarity and transparency and access to our, system, our public process. With Council Member Selich voting no, the motion carries 6-1. Okay, the next item, we're still on consent here. Item number six. Yes, and if you could pull up the PowerPoint real quick. Um, yes, Mr. Piotr, I'd like to give you a little explanation on what we're doing here, and there's a map on your screen that's in your packet. Um, I want to give uh, staff uh, some kudos on this. This has been a very complex project to try to dredge the, uh, the Simonic Slough. Um, we've had to have a lot of permitting challenges. We've also had agreement challenges and also some private property challenges. As we went through this, we thought we had most of our uh, ducks in a row. If you look at this map here, I'll explain a little bit in the slough and to orientate the, the uh, residents who are watching. Uh, Pacific Coast Highway I'm pointing to down here that runs along here. Cappy's Restaurant would be around here. And this is a water body we call Seminic Slough. Um, we've got multiple ownerships in here. The green is owned by the city of Newport Beach. Um, the yellow here is a Caltrans portion, which is open water. The blue here is a Caltrans portion that actually goes into a box culvert that goes underneath uh, Coast Highway. And then there's this purple area here, which is actually now private property. This area and the adjacent area to the south of it were actually signal landmark property way back when, and somehow got through a tax sale and was picked up by a private party, and now they own these. So in order to dredge this slough, we've been looking at running about 15,000 yards out of here, and our concept was to not only dredge the public side, but also see if we could work with the owner to dredge the purple, the private side. And compounding that, we've got an agreement with Caltrans to remove the material in this built-up area here, and also when we're in there, they're gonna come in with special equipment and dig out this box culvert that hasn't been dug out in many, many years, and it's, it's pretty much blocked and full. 
So what we ended up doing is having, um, we thought we had to deal with the uh, private party and just at the end we couldn't come to a negotiated agreement where council was allowed us to go to. They want about five times what we're willing to pay for that. Um, also the uh, Caltrans agreement had some hiccups and a few things with the bidders and we figured, you know, it's probably better to repackage this. Now we will not be dredging the purple for sure. We will be dredging Caltrans for sure. So we're gonna go ahead and repackage it as one bid, get a better price on that and bring it back as soon as we can. I know this project's been going on for years and years and I hate to see it delayed anymore, but basically what you're saying is that the scope, even while you had it out to bid, was changing and it changed so significantly that it just doesn't make sense to try and change the existing bids. Instead, you're going to rebid the project. That's correct. We, we took a shot because we are under uh, some strict schedule guidelines, particularly trying to get done by the time of bird season in February. So we, we thought we had all the pieces moving and I just met with the property owner and our real estate folks and they kind of threw a zinger at us. We couldn't come to terms. So we said, okay, we'll just flip this around and do something different. So you'll see this for an award hopefully in a few weeks. So is that property owner the HOA for the homeowners there or? No, it's a private property owner who um, I, I believe is a habit or a hobby. Maybe he goes up and he picks up tax sales properties. So um, he's looking for some credit on this one more than we want to give him. And he's alluded to this southerly one that he wants to try to develop that. So we. So it's just an opportunist that's picked up a bargain, hopes to cash in on it. Couldn't say that, but he, he sees some value. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's all I was looking for is an explanation so those residents that are out there know that we're, we're not <coughs> trying to create trouble. I'll move for staff recommendation. Okay, Mr. Petros, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just want to make sure that Mr. Piotr knows that as the representative for this district for the past four years, I have been hosting meetings with the people in the shores regularly they know what's going on i've been apprised by mr webb as recently as this week on the sale so clearly uh we we've got it mr piotr we've got it okay so do we have a and i'll second that second motion. all right let's call for the vote did, did you take public comment i'm sorry oh did i no probably not <laughs> public comments on summon slew Uh, Mayor Dixon and members of the council, I was, my, my name is Tim Mosier. I appreciated the identification that part of the slough is indeed privately owned, although I'm mystified what the private owner's interest in it is. Uh, the question I have, I have noticed for years that the city mapping system shows both the purple and the green portions to, to be not city property, but we just heard that the green portion is yet the city's mapping system continues as of at least Friday to say that it's not city property. I'm curious when the city acquired the green portion and how much we paid for it. Thank you. And I apologize. The green portion is actually city um, receivership. It's state lands property and we manage state lands. So I look at it as city property, but it's actually the state's property, state lands. Okay, any other public comments? Please come forward. Seeing none, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously, 7-0. Madam Clerk, we want to announce the results of the voting. We have received the results for the assessment district ballot results. have it noted that Mayor Pro Tem Muldoon and Council Member Curry have left the dais due to their recusals from previous. For Assessment District 114, there were a total of 255 ballots. Um, the total yes ballots were 80 for an assessment amount of $1,656,435.86, which is a percentage of 38.6%. No ballots were 128 for an assessment amount of $2,637,071.27, which is 61.4%. So the number of ballots received were 208 with a total assessment for that district of $4,293,507.13. For assessment district of 114, 51 ballots were received, or there were a total of 51 ballots, 38 ballots were received for an assessment 
amount of $797,900.74. Of the yes votes, there were 19 for an assessment amount of 401595 pardon me, $401,595.09, which is a percent of 50.3%. No ballots were 19 ballots and for an assessed amount of $396,305.65 for an assessment percentage of 49.7%. So the, so the amount failed on 114, but not on 114B. 114B can't stand alone. Yeah, but they can't stand, stand alone. They were, they were packaged up to go together, so the whole thing uh, fails. So please, 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 no, no, no. Please, please maintain order, thank you. All right, so city clerk, please, if you would, um, or city attorney, please tell us what we do now. Yeah, but, uh, just oh. wor working with Mr. Harp. So then the council's action is to determinatively find that the that there there was not a majority approval in 114 there, there it was and, and 114 did not pass and therefore uh, proceedings do not advance is that correct as to what the action is abandoned I actually spoke to um, our outside counsel who's very experienced in these matters and so the next step would be to actually um, take action f2 and that will not impact them from coming back and trying to reform the districts if they want to. They will not have a period of time to wait. And I'll let him go ahead and clarify that. Uh, it was Brian Forbath with Straddling. So uh, Good evening, is Mayor our Dixon. action tonight to confirm the election then? Yes, the, um, so the action tonight is there is a majority protest. In you should probably identify yourself. Oh, Brian Forbath from Straddling, Yaka Carlson and Routh, the bond council of the city. Um, the action tonight is, you know, there's a majority protest in 114. That means underneath the act, that cannot come back to the council for a period of one year if, if uh, the residents want to try to reform and bring this back. 114B, there was not a majority protest. Um, it, it was bound together with the other districts, so it fails. But if, they, if the property owners in 114B decided they wanted to come back and reconform the assessment district, they could come back without waiting the one year period. So I just wanted to clarify that and make sure that that was clear for the record. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And just, just to confirm, there's no issue with going forward then with action F2, which is the adoption of the resolution. That doesn't impact anything. No, no that's fine. All right, so what we need to do is make a motion now to direct city staff to prepare a resolution abandoning the proceedings. It's prepared already. The All motion, right. if you choose it, is to move item F2 under 15. Okay. I'm gonna go to D. Okay, I don't have any problem. Oh, all right. Okay. I'll move item two under F15. All right, do we have a second? Second. Any comments up here? I'll move it to public comments. Okay. We don't need to do that. Okay, all right, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously, 5-0. And Dave, if I could just make one statement that this was an extraordinary amount of effort on this assessment district, as you know, and I, and I need to give kudos to Mark Vakoyevich and uh, Mike Sinecori here. They did the yeoman's effort to work with these groups through the food fight that we had for months. And um, thank you folks, and, and thanks for all attending on and doing your job. And thank you staff, we appreciate it, and a long, a long journey. And thank you residents on both sides who worked hard uh, for your beliefs. Madam Mayor. Yes, Mr. Petros. Just, just one uh, quick question. Uh, as this fails, is the city, has the city expended funds in anticipation of moving forward that now are just evaporate? What's the liability to the city now that this has failed? Um, and I could have Mr. Sinecori address that, but um, I believe we expended a certain amount for the Assessment Engineering Bond Council on a risk that these come forward. That's how council usually will do this. There was another uh, budget amendment, should it pass tonight, that we we're gonna get additional money to start the design. We won't encumber that, but we have some risk that we've uh, expended. So how money. much was that? 
Um, do you happen to know that, Mike? It's 115,000. So if we would have stuck with our original policies and not circumvented or tried to shortcut what we do, as it seems we have been doing from the dais, oh, well, we'll just shortcut this one. We'll make a new rule for that one. We could have saved the taxpayers 115 grand. Please, please order, please, thank you. All right, um, Mayor, Madam Clerk. Public comments on non-agenda items. Public comments are invited on non-agenda items generally con considered to be within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council. Speakers must limit comments to three minutes. Before speaking, please state your name for the record. Mayor Dixon, members of City Council, my name is Susan Halton, <clears throat> and I'm here once again tonight to ask for your help in fixing an absolutely hazardous road intersection in Newport Beach. It has been an ongoing issue which puts our citizens at extreme risk every single day. <clears throat> Excuse me, it has been conversation for years over this danger that this intersection creates with no resolution. I feel it's only a matter of time before a fatality occurs at the corner of Irvine Boulevard and Private Road. Pirate Road is a quiet cul-de-sac off of Irvine Boulevard. The neighborhood was established some 40 years ago when traffic flow was a fraction of what it is today. When looking left to see if it's safe to proceed right into traffic, there's absolutely no visibility. One hopes and prays that an oncoming vehicle is not going too fast or texting or the sun is in their eyes so they might have a chance to avoid hitting you. A wall that the city erected some 40 years ago completely blocks one ability to see around the curb. I'm told by road engineering that the wall was built by the city, but sits on private property of 2202 Private Road, and there the problem begins. The plot map on this property shows a backyard where there would be room to move the wall back, thus giving citizens a safe road of passage. <clears throat> I see that 2202 Private Road is listed for sale. I don't know, but could the city purchase this property and reconfigure the wall as to give visibility for needed for traffic? Neighbors relate stories of injuries over the year. One neighbor's daughter and husband were T-boned seriously and injured. Another resident, which you know, rides his bike in and out of his own neighborhood because of the enormity of the risk. I do not live on this street, but frequently drive in and out because my kids and grandkids live there. Every time I'm out there, I wonder why residents that have put up with this for so long. There are a number of original owners there, so perhaps they have given up, or perhaps they're immune to this dire situation. I contacted the record request site and requested the number of accidents in the last 10 years between Santiago Drive, a mere 100, 400 feet to the south, and Private Road, and there have been 38. I have a copy of that for council, and I was astounded by the number. I don't know the specific of each incident, but the numbers seem high to me. I tried to measure the distance one can see when looking left. This approach was done out in traffic over the white line, which of course is illegal. With the help of the computer, I estimated about 200 feet of clearance as possible, again, illegally, out over the white line. One neighbor suggested the installation of a stoplight at the entrance to Private Road and synchronize it with lights at Santiago Drive. Even though this seems odd to have a traffic light 400 feet, feet apart, a similar setup is done at Irvine Boulevard in Bristol over the 405. I suggested this to road engineering and the response was that the volume of traffic was too low, entering and exiting private road. Months are going by since I first contacted road engineering and the police department. My file of correspondence and the log of telephone calls is growing larger than I had hoped for. The last time was that I was at a council, I, I asked you all to take a drive in and out of there if you had a chance. I, I hope that you did have a chance. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, staff, I actually did go over there. What is your last name? Halton. H Halton? With an N. Oh, Halton. Um, and I'm just curious, Mr. Webb, have we looked at that? And, and she reported that staff has said there's not enough traffic. When is there? A, I think we should look at it again. I actually went through that intersection, and I can see what she is referring to, that it could be potentially dangerous because there is a blind curve there, but I'm not a traffic expert. <laughs> I do know our traffic folks have looked at this. It's been looked at over the years. It, it's uh, 
There is a large wall there, and we look at site distance there, and as we reported, as we're doing the Irvine Avenue uh, pavement job, we're actually moving the lanes and trying to increase the site distance a little. There is uh, warning beacons ahead of time and flashing beacons, I know. Is it ideal? Y you'd love to have more visibility, but when that was developed for some reason, they built it that way. There is a hedge along the wall. We asked about maybe getting that trimmed. That might help a little bit. So I, I don't have a recommendation. I don't think they're recommending a signal there. Um, there is not enough traffic. It's a short little cul-de-sac. Understand there's also light three, 400 feet away, which is, is problematic. Um, and basically you get into the cost of operating a light. You know, it'd be up to council if they wanted to pursue that though. Well, I just put on notice that it is something we should be mindful of. And as she says that before an a, a tragic accident occurs, but as I say, I'm not a traffic expert, but um, we just, Look at it again, I guess, is what I'm saying, just to be sure if there's anything, whether the, uh, short of a stoplight, if there's anything that could enhance the safety of, of that intersection. Okay, any other public comments? Seeing none, we'll come back here. Oral reports from City Council and Committee activities. I'll st start over on this side, Mr. Piotr. Just wanted to report that we had a town hall meeting about mosquitoes for all those that are interested. Uh, it was sparsely attended, but it was, uh, we left material for people if they're still interested in Zika virus or West Nile virus. Thanks. Are we safe? <laughs> okay, Mr. Duffield. Mayor Pro uh, Mr. Selich. I don't have any announcements, but this, tell the city clerk I lost my ballots for item 17. There's so much paper up here. <laughs> You'd like another ballot. Mr. Curry. So I just Mr. Petros. Uh, quickly, on the 15th, uh, we held a finance committee meeting. It was a very, very uh, hearty meeting related to our investment strategies, our investment advisors, uh, the health of the investments of the city. I am here to tell you that after a lengthy meeting, the investment portfolio of the city of Newport Beach is strong, it is healthy. Uh, the decisions made by prior councils and this council are continuing to uh, support a very conservative approach to our investment strategies. And there is a great deal of oversight by our staff who are trained professionals and by this council on the future of the uh, financial health of Newport Beach. I was very, very pleased with the outcome. We will be having another finance committee meeting on October 13th. I strongly encourage members of the public to attend this as this will be a primer on pension obligations and our OPEB. Uh, what are the pension liabilities? How are they defined? What does it mean for Newport Beach? So if you have any questions about the uh, financial health and pension issues in Newport Beach, please attend the upcoming October 13th Finance Committee meeting held in uh, the Newport Coast Room in Bay 2E at four o'clock on Thursday the 13th. Very good, I second that. Okay, let's move on to current business, uh, the last item. Number 17, the appointment of a new civil service board member to fill the unscheduled vacancy on the civil service board. So Madam Clerk, what would you like us to do? Council was provided paper ballots, so if you could um, do your vote in order to be appointed, either Jane Delagrada or Sharon Wood would need to um, receive four votes, and you can also take public comments at this time, Ma Madam Mayor. Okay, I think we're voting. Oh, excuse me, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Public comment, please. Any public comments, please come forward. Seeing none, pass your ballots to the city clerk, if you would, please. Council Member Piotr voted for Sharon Wood. Council Member Duffield, Sharon Wood. 
Council Member Selich, Sharon Wood. Council Member Curry, Sharon Wood. Council Member Petros, Sharon Wood. Mayor Pro Tem Muldoon, Jane Delagrada. And Mayor Dixon, Jane Delagrada. With five votes, Sharon Wood is the new Civil Service Board Member. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk. Motion for reconsideration. A motion to reconsider the vote on any action taken by the City Council at either this meeting or the previous meeting may be made only by one of the Council members who voted with the prevailing side. Seeing none. All right. Uh, we're going to adjourn. Mr. Curry, you're going to make that adjournment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm very sorry to learn this week of the passage of Theodore Bob Robbins, Jr. Bob was an extraordinary business and community leader and a friend to many in the Newport Mesa area. For many years, Bob operated Theodore Robbins Ford, a dealership his father founded in Newport Beach in 1923. The dealership grew over the years. It moved twice to different Newport Beach locations before moving to its current location on Harbor Boulevard in Costa Mesa in the 1960s. Despite the moves, one thing has remained constant. The Robbins family has owned and operated Theodore Robbins Ford for 95 years and four generations. Bob believed in giving back and Bob and his wife Jenny have supported and served in a number of local philanthropic and community organizations. Bob served on the board of directors of Hogue Hospital's 552 Club Support Group, the YMCA, the Newport Harbor, <coughs> Costa Mesa Chambers of Commerce, uh, the Balboa Bay Club Board of Directors, and served as president of the Exchange Club of Newport Harbor. He was also past skipper of the Commodores Club. Among his many professional affiliations, Bob was past president of the Ford Dealers Advertising Association of Southern California and the Motor Car Dealers Association of Southern California. He's survived by his wife, Jenny, sons, Dave and Jim, daughter, Sarah, grandchildren, his extended family and friends. He was a delightful man to be around. He was a member of our men's lunch uh, club uh, once a month uh, and a great community leader. He'll be sorely missed. Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.